and then we'll be back probably for season season four probably be back maybe sometime early next year so keep that in mind Anyway, Snake, you're welcome on the show. Glad to have you here. Now, of course, you guys did win with a nice 2-0 sweep, but I've got to say, a um, couple of interesting plays in the mid-game. You guys, it seemed like you guys sort of slacked off a bit and started diving a little too much in that mid-game, in the game number two. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. Let me just turn you up. You are very, very quiet. Um, audio, audio, audio. Here we go, try again. See if I can hear you now. Okay, no, you're still super quiet, like you're barely registering. Alright, I'm going to turn it all the way to max now. Try again. Hi. There we go, that works. Okay, got you set to max. Alright, fantastic. So yeah, I mean, there was a lot of diving going on in the big game. Was that just you guys playing aggressive because you felt like you had room to play aggressive? Or was it, you just feel like you sort of slipped, slipped up a bit there? Um... We definitely wanted to play aggressive, but that perhaps was too aggressive and definitely turned out to be a mistake. Uh, they got a double kill off of middle, and, actually was, and then they chased Fog and got a triple kill in the end. And that was definitely a bad play from us. Now, I've got to ask, uh, I, I was, I've got to ask about, uh, what was it? Uh, there we go, okay, yeah. Now, of course, uh, Pulse, now they had a few, ran like the second up, I had MV co-casting with me and he was commenting on how random Pulse's lineup was in game number two. How did you guys feel going, like how did you feel about their lineup that they had? Do you think it was effective, like could have been effective or do you think it was just sort of all over the place? I feel that they just have to game one, because they basically pick with the heroes that we had game in game one, except they they didn't want us to pick in game two again, so they sort of just because there's not enough bands to go around, so they just picked it. And I feel that they didn't plan it out very well, so the picks didn't really work out for them. Okay then, and now game number, I've got. I mean, you guys completely and pretty much completely and utterly steamrolled them in game number, in game number in both games. Do you think there's anything? What do you think they could have done better in you, against you guys? Uh, I I think game one perhaps. Their lanes should have been differently because I, I personally feel that their lanes were a little bit passive and they couldn't have done too much. Because the dark seer middle is very hard to do anything to, against a TA unless you get support, and he didn't get that much support. So that so I just farmed against him basically. And then when you trading farm versus a TA as a dark seer, it's not it's not an ideal situation. And then and then the tiny was having also a nice farm. And I, I think they just didn't have the lineup to deal with the TA and the Tiny. Perhaps they should have picked something aggressive, like aggressive tri lane, and then roam middle after they kill the tri lane. Perhaps something like that. They did have a, they got a lot of farm on that Nakes uh, early on. I mean, they got a lot. Like that Nakes ended up really, really farmed. How do you feel though? Nakes in the late game stacks up against the Tiny late game. I think a Nakes late game will lose to Tiny because of the fact that. Um, after the six second of enrage, unless you have a BKB, you're, you're always going to get craggy versus tiny, and it's very annoying to get stunned for a second or two every time you try to attack. And, and I think tiny is just the ultimate melee carry right now, except for faces ward and AM other exceptions. Yeah, I've got to agree. The RNF can be a hell of a thing to play <laughs> to try and roll the dice with. It can be really frustrating. Speaking of the RNF, I noticed a lot of roots coming out at some very timely moments for uh, a certain bear. Definitely some. Fr I, I mean, if I if I was if I was uh, Wagamama last match, with the amount of roots he was getting hit by, I would have flipped the table. <laughs> it wasn't looking good from there. That said, though, you guys, um, that was your last game. So, how do you feel overall that you have performed as a team in this tournament? I think we definitely performed. Um, as well as we, it wasn't as well as we would like, of course, because we didn't finish first. But I think we performed very well overall. When we only dropped two games, and one of them was Rose Empire, which is a very respectable team. And I think we performed very well this season. I'm looking forward to for the next one. Okay, fair enough. And uh, that was it. Yeah. So you finished up seven four nine. So that pretty much locks you in a second place. You should be able to go forward into the Masters event, which is coming up later in the month. So it's pretty much locked you for the, uh, locked you in a position there. However, we're probably going to have a bit of a uh, bit of a brawl over the last couple of spots here. We'll see how Fnatic does. Of course, Fnatic still have one game left, and it looks like we might possibly have a bit of a tie up here between VP, AL, and possibly possibly Zero and No Tidehunter. 
who do you think is well obviously no Tarno are a hell of a contender there but besides no Tarno who do you think are probably the best team to challenge him there in a possible brawl for fifth pl- uh, for fourth spot you said Fnatic was part of it right correct uh, no Fnatic looks like they Fnatic looks like they're guaranteed third spot at this point in time even if they've got one game left and it's going to be against Empire so, so all those teams are fighting for the fourth spot? Yeah, Virtus Pro, Absolute Legends, uh, and potentially Zero, depending on how Zero go against Meet Your Makers. I think Virtus Pro and you know, Tidehunter will probably have the best shot in, in Tidehunter first and then beat Virtus Pro personally, because we play Skirm versus them. We know them pretty well. I think they're probably the strongest teams uh, contending right there for that spot. Okay then. Anyway, so I'm gonna thank you for your time here. Thanks for coming to the show. Is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to before you go? Yeah, I'd like to shout out to my sponsors, Team Dignit, uh, from Team Dignitas, Antag, uh, Alienware, and, and Twitch TV. Thank you for having me here, man. All right, we'll see you later. Good luck, of course, in the in the Masters event. We'll see you later. Okay, got that sorted out. All right, guys. So 